Hey, this is Ed. Come for a nation ministry, life cycles of a weed part two. So you got that lawn looking really, really good. Then all of a sudden, this thing crops up and it's all ugly. It comes up in a couple days after you um, cut your grass, water your grass, things are looking great. And all of a sudden here comes a creature from the ground. You know, in the passages in Matthew chapter 13, it's talking about the soil. So you got to go from soil, then you go to weed and tear. And in the scriptures here, it's actually talking about wheat and weed or tear. We're talking about crabgrass, bluegrass, and that type of thing. Zoysia, maybe you like that. But we're not talking about wheat. Although you are a wheat. Some of you may be familiar with the agricultural understanding of Israel where the wheat would be gathered in measurements in Omer in Omer measurements so we're talking about wheat when we talk about the scriptures Matthew chapter 13 but Yeshua Jesus does a great job for those who didn't understand um, natural things he would always teach in parables and people would ask why are you teaching in parables in fact you can see here in Matthew chapter 13 he's going into several parables it's the Hebrew form of teaching called Agadah say that Agadah Agadah simply means to tell a story you can teach scriptures one of two ways or you can talk about scriptures one of two ways you can talk about them from a legal perspective and i'm not talking about legalism that symbolism that comes from the church we're talking about legal like legal rulings like a sabbath day's journey for example would be something legal that would be meted out or you shall not is a legal ruling but agada is a story you know if you're sitting around the table and your parents were talking to you and they said remember ananias and sapphira then they're telling you and then they go into a story about someone else who did something then they're teaching it agada format and this is what yeshua the master is doing right here in matthew chapter 13. so as we pay attention to that you see this this story crop up about the weeds and so we're looking at this and trying to figure out how what what do you do with weeds because we all have weeds in our lives and that's what we're doing and, and i'm that's what we're talking about here but i tell you one thing i had some weeds and this is what i went to go do i went and got some weed killer da, 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 da. i got some weed killer and i hooked this bad boy up to the hose and i went and especially around the weeds and the weed area i'm like i'm gonna tell you one of the problems with that is sometimes we water and use weed killer on stuff doesn't need weed killer now stay they, they say with these chemicals all oh, won't hurt your grass but they didn't it didn't have it on there at first it didn't have it on there at first it was doing fine but then I induce and mess with the process similar we can find right here in the scriptures in Matthew chapter 13 we can see uh, he says he answered in verse 28 he answered an enemy has done this the servants asked him then do you want to go, us to go and pull these weeds up, these weeds that were sown at night? Do you want us to go pull them up? He said, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot some of the weeds, under the, uh, some of the wheat that's been sown. So next week, we'll talk about what happens when you uproot. We're not talking about uproot just yet, but we are talking about what happens when you apply weed killer to your situation. You see, some of us have weed killer opportunities in our life all the time. And what we do is we spray our attitudes, my attitude, your attitude, in a situation and we get everybody around us wet with the chemical of anger, wet with the chemical of doubt, wet with the chemical of hate. When we need to deal with one person, the scripture says, if you have aught with somebody, you need to go deal with them. But instead of us dealing with somebody that we got a problem with, we go and we take weed killer and we make an email or something, or we make a uh, we get make a scene in public, or we or we do something with weed killer. We hook that baby up to the hose, and we say, "I'm full of the holes of life." Shh. 
this and you're going to find out. And we just go around and we hose people down in the name of righteous activity. And I know that next week we'll be talking about with the statement that's said by the master said, no, let, let the stuff grow together. And then when the servants, when, when it's going to be gathered, we're going to gather the wheat and we'll put that in a barn and we'll take that tear, that, that weed, we're going to bind that. And we're going to, we're going to take that together. We're going to throw that in a furnace and let it burn. Now, who does that gathering at the end of days? Who's doing the gathering? So I, I think for me and for you, what we should know as we're dealing with the cycle of anger that comes along with applying weed killer in our life, in our situations, in our circumstances, is that we got to be careful that we don't hurt the people that are closest to us. Oftentimes when we become angry, when we become incensed, when we become, you know, vigilantes, the people who are loving us the most, the people who are closest to us end up getting hurt the most. Don't apply weed killer to every situation. By the way, some weeds you can't kill with weed killer. I'm Ed. I'll catch you next week. Shalom.